Welcome to the Yu-Gi-Oh! Starter Series. In this series, I have an allowance of 1,000 gems to spend each episode. Every episode we will upgrade our deck and build the best deck possible to climb to the highest rank in the game. This is the Yu-Gi-Oh! Starter Series. My name's Kush, and this is episode 6 of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Starter Series. Last episode, we did really well. I believe the last couple episodes, we've just been constantly winning. We ended off on plat 5, but now we have to climb all the way to the top. We have 10 packs to open up. We also have some ultra rare tickets and super rare tickets, which we've been saving from the dual pass, so I'll claim those right now. And that's a, all right, that's a lot of stuff. That's two ultra rare tickets right there. That's good. All we pretty much need for the deck are ultra rare tickets. So for now, let's look at the deck and see what we can add in. Let's see if we get any secret packs. So looking at the deck, there are a couple cards that I want to add and that we can add right away, which are the third copy of Max C, also the third copy of Ash Blossom. There are some new cards that I want to add into the deck, such as one of them being Performer Pal Celestial Magician. This card is not only a Performer Pal monster, but also a magician, which means that it's searchable. It'll give our deck a little more power. It's also a scale 8, which helps a little bit. And the final card that I think I really do want in the extra deck is a card called Appalooza. This Link monster is so powerful, it can negate monster effects up to the number of uh, attack points it has, and the arrows point down, it's perfect for this deck. And there's very easy combos where I can end on making this to make it harder for my opponent to play the game. So straight out the gate, I'm going to be redeeming one copy of Appalooza. Sadly, this doesn't give us a secret pack or anything, and added into the deck, I'm going to be taking out one Time Star Magician, since we rarely ever make it, and I feel like one is enough just there for the utility. And finally, I think another copy of Maxi will help to give us some draw power. And sadly, we didn't unlock any secret packs, so let's go into the pack opening and open up those 10 packs. Hopefully, we get some Ultra Rare tickets so that we can hopefully enchant another card, preferably another Ash Blossom. Honestly, we still have a bundle deal saved up, so we're going to buy this bundle deal because it not only does it give us the 10 packs, we save gems, it also gives us a free card, so we're going to be claiming this. Alright, hopefully we get lucky, and we got one ultra rare, which is good, it's better than last episode. Oh, Yingxing path. Oh! Oh, sh- <laughs> I accidentally skipped it. I accidentally pressed the skip button, but um- Dude, it looks like those packs are so good. We got a, we, what is this called? A royal finish? A rainbow, rainbow rarity? I don't know. We got the highest rarity in the entire game. <laughs> what the heck? Oh, I accidentally skipped the packs. Oh no. None of the cards that we got really help us in our pendulum deck. But what's really important is that we actually got ultra rare cards, which is cool because now we can disenchant these and make cards that we actually need. And not only that, if you remember, we saved the 250 gems for each of these openings. We didn't spend them, which means we had 750 gems saved up. Pretty much, we just got the Solemn Judgment for free. So now we can open up another 10 packs and see what we get. Hopefully we get some more Ultra Rare tickets so we can upgrade our deck even more. I'll try not to skip it. Oh, oh my gosh. Wait, there's three guaranteed Ultra Rares. Okay, first pack, nothing. That's not bad. Okay, here we go. Wait a minute. Huh? Wait, what's this? Oh! King Beast Barbaros. This card looks sick. I don't think we're ever going to be using these cards in this series, but they're still good to have, I guess. Let's see, what's in this one? Mystic Piper? Come on, come on. Ultra Geist Memorigant? I'm going to be- I've never seen any of these cards, like... Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know what they do. The final pack. Alright. Oh, nice. I like the look of that. Judgment Dragon. Oh my gosh. Oh, when he's spoily too. That's nice. Alright, we got three Ultra Rares out of that. Not bad. Uh, the Super Rares aren't very useful. I think our deck's already completely filled with Super Rares, so we're not going to be really using them that much. But the Ultra Rares are super important. Alright, with that out of the way, let's go back into the deck and see what we can do. So, in Master Duel, at the top right, there's this cool little feature where you can dismantle your cards. 
and you can select like a bunch of them all at once. And what I did was I used a filter tool and I selected only the ultra rares. You can do this for ultra rare, super rares or whatever rarity. I'm only going to be doing the ultra rares because that's like really all we need. And you'll see all the ultra rares we have so far in the series and the maxi is amazing. I think we're going to dismantle this, 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 and this. Pretty much all the ones that we got this episode. Should get like 75 out of that. And I feel <laughs> I feel so bad pressing this button because some of the cards that we're dismantling are actually like, I actually like them a lot, but um, it has to be done. It has to be done. And with that, we can go back to the regular deck. We can at least get two more ultra rare cards and I'll come back to you when I pick those two. All right. So the two that I picked are the first one being a card I mentioned earlier, which is called Performa Pal Celestial Magician. This card has really good synergy with the deck. We only need one copy, so the one copy is searchable. So right away, let's let's uh, generate it. And finally, Ash Blossom, because Ash Blossom is super overpowered, and I mean, having more copies is pretty good. And just like that, our deck is way stronger. New additions in this deck are one Mexi, one Ash Blossom, the new Celestial Magician, and Appalooza. We gotta take out three cards right away. I can see taking out a uh, red reboot. Never came up. It's not searchable. I don't think I want it in the deck. Also, Raigeki, even though this card's really cool and a lot of people do use it because it's like so powerful, it doesn't really come up in our deck. Our deck's at the point where it's so powerful that it can like search. Searching means it can like look for any card in our deck and get it to our hand. And this card doesn't really like help a lot in situations where our opponent's going. That's where we need the hand traps. This card's more like on our turn we can like do something, but usually on our turn we want cards to like get our plays going. And it's a tough decision, but I think the final card to take out, and I hate to do it, is Stargazer Magician. And even though this card's cool and all, and it has good synergy with Astrograph, Usually, Astrograph's always being searched out with our Link Monster, Heavy Metal Foes, which means that we don't even use his effect to like search out this guy from the deck. Like, like never. I like rarely ever use that effect because he's always being searched out with Electromite from the deck. So if we take out this card, we'll have one less dead card in our deck. This is probably the final version of the Pendulum deck in the Yu-Gi-Oh! Starter Series. I'll be going over card for card and I'm just like really happy that we made it here because this deck is legit really strong and I can't believe how cheap it was to make it. I mean we used a lot of tokens and all that and card tickets but pretty much dude this thing was like this thing was cheap like holy crap and it's powerful. Starting off we got one Cyprian driver he goes with Gamma so we have to put him in because without him Gamma is useless. We got two Dragon Pit Magician. This has good synergy to make the rank 7 XYZ. It also has a cool effect where you can destroy a spell or trap by discarding. We run two because it's also searchable with the Astrograph and Electromite combo. Three copies of Maxi. It's pretty much the card that helps us draw more cards. It also stops our opponent by putting a little pressure. Cyphering Gamma. This card's really good when we are going first and they activate an Ash Blossom on one of our Pendulum Calls or one of our Duos Alliance. And this card pretty much negates their Ash Blossom and gets us two free cards, which means that we can combo off even harder. One Time Gazer Magician. This card is searchable through Chronograph Sorcerer. It's not very good, uh, but it's in here because it is a combo play. If we happen to have this on our hand and this in our deck, we can summon it. So it's okay. Three copies of Ash Blossom. This card's super strong, super powerful. We have one copy, at least run one. I love this card. We're running it at three. Two copies of Performal Pal Pendulum Sorcerer. This card is really, really good. We can run it at three, but I don't really want to push the deck to 41. The main reason I don't want to push the deck to 41, it's not like a super big reason. It's just the smaller the deck is, the easier it is to get to the cards you need. And there's a lot of cards that are really good in your opening hand. And this one's okay in your opening hand. It's searchable, so it's not that big of a problem running it at two. Three Wisdom Eye Magician. This card's super, super strong. It's really, really important. Uh, it just has to be in the deck. It's like one of the main cards in the deck. Same with three copies of Performer Pal Skullbat Joker. This card's one of the main cards in the deck. It just has to be in here. Two copies of Harmonizing Magician. It's at two for a reason, it's really powerful. The, my favorite combo with this card is bringing out Dragon Pit Magician and already having the Astrograph Sorcerer because you'll see, we're probably going to be making this card like every single time. Making the rank 7 and just like getting a free negate from the rank 7 leaving the field and bringing out the fusion. Double Iris Magician is really powerful. If I could run more, I would, but you can only run one copy. Uh, it searches out a very powerful trap card. It also searches out a spell card, which can like add us more cards. I love this card, really good. Purple Poison Magician, we got it in the highest rarity. I'm so happy about that. This card can destroy face-up card. It also has a battle effect where like if it's on a scale, you can increase your monster's attack. 
but pretty much the most important part is that it can destroy face-up card, and it does come up quite a bit. This is a new card we added in, for Formal Pal Celestial Magician, and the effect, well, it has actually multiple effects. One of them you can attack directly, and the other one that'll probably come up is that its attack becomes double, and the one that'll happen the most is that at the end phase you get to add a Pendulum Monster. So pretty much what this card does is it just adds you a Pendulum Monster during the end phase. It doesn't seem like a big deal, but it's just another free monster that we get to add, so it helps a lot. Three copies of Oath Dragon, this card gets us a monster from our extra deck back to our hand, so it gets us more advantage, more cards, so that we can like, we can do something if our opponent happens to destroy all our monsters, all our cards, we're able to come back. One copy of Chronograph Sorcerer, like I said in the beginning, it has synergy with Time Gazer. It's also really powerful because if a card of ours gets destroyed, we can special summon this card from our hand. So it's kind of it's kind of cool and I like it. Absolutely important card, Astrograph Sorcerer. We usually always, always search this card out with Electromite. Uh, it has the effect where if a card of ours is destroyed, we can special summon this card from our hand and we can add a monster with the same name as one destroyed from our deck to our hand. Super powerful. I love this card and it's level 7, has good synergy, it's just really good. Three copies of Pendulum Call. This card, you discard one, and then you gotta add two Pendulum Magicians from your deck to your hand. Also, your scales can't be destroyed. It's really good, I like it a lot. Super simple card to use, Duelist Alliance. It's just, if you have a card in your Pendulum Zone, you just add a card from your deck to your hand. It's really good, I love it. And one star Pendulum Graph. This is a card that's searchable with Double Iris Magician. And it has the effect where if a Magician Monster leaves your field, you gotta add a Magician Monster from your deck to your hand. And also, like, protects them from, like, spells and stuff. Which, I mean, it's, that's pretty good, not gonna lie. And finally, Time Pendulum Graph. We run three copies, it's searchable with Double Iris as well. And this card is so powerful, it's a really good disrupt. We can make it so we can stop our opponent during their turn, which I really, really like. It also can get rid of cards that can't be destroyed by battle or card effect by using an effect where it sends them to the graveyard rather than destroys them. And also it can get rid of two cards. It's just, it's so good. For our extra deck, we have 15 cards starting off with Odd Eyes Vortex Dragon. We can't make this card on its own. The only way to bring out this card is with the rank 7 XYZ. It has an effect where we can like negate anything, spell trap monster effect. Also, when it's summoned, we can like bounce, which we can return a monster from uh, the field to the hand if it's in face-up attack position. It's pretty cool, I like it. This card is super, super powerful. Pretty much super easy to summon. Two dark pendulum monsters. It can copy the effect of any monster on the field or in the graveyard, including your opponent. So if your opponent has a really strong card, you can just copy their effect, but usually I copy my own. And uh, it also has the effect where if you use that effect where you copy, all monsters you control gain pierce, which means that if they attack a defense position monster, it attacks through it and it deals damage. It's really powerful for like OTKs where it's like you kill your opponent in like one turn or you deal massive amount of damage in one turn. Lightning Paladin's a, a fun card to use. I don't really go into the synchros, I'm gonna be honest. We only run one copy. It might come up sometimes, but pretty much the only real useful effect about this card is that you target a spell card in your graveyard and add it to your hand. Pretty much besides that, we're probably not gonna be going into it because there's better cards we can make. Same with Supreme King Dragon Clear Wing. This card has the effect where when it's Synchro Summon, we can destroy all face-up monsters or opponent controls. So if we need to destroy all monsters or opponent controls, we can make this. It's good having it there for like an option in the extra deck. So we can get out of a tricky situation that we otherwise couldn't get out of. But we're not going to be making like first turn. We're not going to be making it like often for no reason. It's only there for an option. Same thing with number 82, Heartland Draco. It's only there for an option. Allows us to attack directly. It's really easy to make. This card, we can make more often, Time Storm Magician. We only run one copy of it. It has the effect where we can detach and add a Pendulum Dark Monster from our deck to our hand. Yeah, I like that effect a lot. It also protects our monsters. So this card's really good to make, not only to give us more card advantage, but also to like kind of protect our cards a little bit. This card, Supreme King Dark Dragon Rebellion, is in the extra deck. Like the others, it's there as an option, um, just in case we need to get over a monster that's too big. It has the effect where we detach, and it makes the monster that it's battling zero attack, and it gains the attack. So like, this guy becomes beefy. He becomes like 4,000, 5,000 attack. Like, he's crazy big. But... We're not going to be making him, like, for no reason. We only make him because we need to get rid of a monster. Now, this card, we're going to be making a lot if we have, if we're able to. Because this card, the effect, I'm not going to lie. It, like, it's like Utopia. It, like, negates an attack. Um, that's not good. The good effect is that when this card leaves the field, you get a special summon, a super powerful monster that can negate any effect. That's the reason we run it. And that's the reason we're going to be trying to make it, like, every single time, if able. Not because its first effect's good, but because this card brings out a better card. Finally, this is a card that we're going to be making every single time. Heavy Metal Foes Electromite. Super powerful. When you Link Summon, you get to search your deck for a Pendulum Monster. And pretty much, we're always going to be searching the same exact Pendulum Monster, Astrograph. And also, we like get a Destroy card, add a card from our extra deck to our hand. And then we also get a Draw card. It's just super crazy, super good synergy. This card's really good. This card's here, Nightmare Cerberus. It's here as an option just in case we need to get rid of something. Same thing with Nightmare Phoenix. Nightmare Cerberus gets rid of a Special Summon Monster. And Nightmare Phoenix gets rid of a Spell or Trap. So these two cards are here just for options, just in case we need to get rid of something. Claw Sheep is like Electromite, but worse. Uh, I say that because Electromite's just so good. Like, this card, Electromite, is extremely powerful. Uh, Claw Sheep doesn't have the effect where you can search your deck for all those effects, but the thing that it does have is that it's two arrows pointing down, and it kind of has a decent effect where if you summon a monster in the zone that it points to, you get, like, cool effects. The only noticeable one that we're probably going to be pulling off is the Fusion one, where we get a free monster from the graveyard. Borosaur Dragon, 
is a boss monster. Before we made it a lot. Now we're not going to be really making that much. It's like utility similar to the other cards in the extra deck. But the card that we're going to be making the absolute most of and trying to make a lot of is Appalooza, Bow of the Goddess. This card is crazy. The arrows point down, which means that you can pendulum summon to the arrows, which is really good in a pendulum deck. It also has a really good effect where you can negate monster effects. Uh, it's just like, it's super easy to make. It's like generic. It's, it's perfect. It's perfect for this deck. I'm super glad it's in. With that, that's the main deck. That's the extra deck. Let's go jump into those duels because this deck is looking strong. I'm not going to lie. We reached Platinum 1 in the Yu-Gi-Oh! Starter Series. I'm not gonna lie, there's so many win-losses, win-losses leading up to this, but I'll show you. Oh my goodness, I'm just so, I'm so relieved. We finally reached the highest rank in the entire game. The last, the last couple duels are win, 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 win. I just wanna say, I'm so glad we reached this spot. I want to thank God. I want to thank my mom. I want to thank you guys for watching. I'm just so, so, so happy and relieved. I realized when I was playing in, in Platinum that there are some cards that I kind of needed in the deck, uh, specifically the extra deck. So what I'll probably do is I'll make a follow-up video and in that video it'll be maxed out rarity the best cards you can possibly have in the deck um but as for now let's jump into the replays so starting off this is the first replay and i'm going against dinos i have no hand traps i have no way to stop him he's gonna go full combo i can't i can't do anything and his combo is actually pretty good. His end board, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, his end board is incredible. Like, I'm honestly a little surprised that I even got over his end board. But yeah, if you if you play dinos or you played against dinos, you'll be familiar with these combos. But pretty much what he's trying to do is trying to get these monsters on the field so he can like go into even bigger plays and then eventually summons this like boss monster who can like flip everything face down. He's using the Scrap Engine, which, uh, I, I remember my friend played Dinos, like, back when it came out, the Structure Deck. The Scrap Engine is, like, a newer thing, so I'm not really familiar with it, but, yeah. He ends up making Appalooza, which can negate monster effects. And then here, he's using the spell to bring out his boss monster. So, right there, that's, that's actually a pretty scary board. And it, it even gets worse, because now he brings out Borlord. So, this is his board. He has Appalooza, three monster negates. He has Ultimate Conductor, he can flip all my monsters face down, also it's like really strong. And he has Boral Savage, which can negate uh, one card, Omni Negate, Spell Trapper Monster Effect. So, I'm thinking like, I'm thinking like, I think I lost, but then I'm like, I'm not gonna give up. I'm gonna try to do my plays, I'm gonna try to do what I can do. Right here, he's gonna flip everything face down. Uh, luckily, Magician's Effect still goes through, so I still get a card. And I didn't even know... I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna pause. I didn't even know I could do this, but my extra deck was glowing and I'm like, wait, what is this? I can fusion summon for Supreme King, even though my pendulums are face down. I didn't know you could do that. So that's something that I just figured out. But <laughs> because of this, I was able to get over his Boral Savage, which is like an Omni Negate. He never even used it. So I'm like, okay, I'm chilling now. I'm good. And luckily, I'm like, I'm like, okay, we're, we're doing pretty good. We're doing pretty good. I got rid of the, the Omni Negate. And I still have Venom on my field, like my field's actually looking pretty good, I have a trap just in case. I'm able to make Time Star. Now, I like Time Star, you know, he's pretty good, he searches, but in this duel, Time Star was the MVP, I'm not even gonna lie. He, he's gonna search from a deck, but he's gonna get negated from Appalooza, which is like completely normal. But the reason that Time Star is the MVP is because of his second effect, which is he can protect your spell or traps. Like your, your two pendulum cards down here, he can protect those. He's gonna activate this field spell and it's gonna like give me a token I can't target it. I'm like, I'm not really sure what to do here. So I'm like, ah, you know, I'll destroy the field. Time Star has the effect where the things can't be destroyed. So the trap activates, I can send one. And then this card's crazy. I didn't know this card existed. He can like destroy my monster. Uh, I can only attack that. It's like a weird effect. But here is why Time Star came in MVP. I didn't pause quick enough, but pretty much what ended up happening was this, this synchro guy attacked my Time Star. He killed him, and Time Star died. 
but I have this new card that we added in, Performer Pal Celestial Magician, and if an XYZ gets destroyed, uh, I can bring it back from the graveyard. So I bring back Time Star, and normally this would destroy itself for bringing it back, but then Time Star's effect activates protecting it. So pretty much I get a, a free revive, and I'm just like, dude, that's so crazy. So now, now I got a Time Star for free. Like, he just came back for free. It's like he never even left. And I'm gonna activate the trap, use Time Star's effect, uh, to protect it so I can send two codes. I'm gonna destroy Zapalooza, I'm gonna destroy that. And he just gives up. That duel was so freaking cool. I can't believe I came back and Omni negate, uh, the monster effect negate, and the Book of Moon on his side of the field. I got rid of all of it. Like, that was, that was an amazing duel. I'm not even gonna lie. Pretty sure he knew what was gonna happen. So, in this duel, I believe I'm going first. My hand's actually pretty decent. I have an Ash Blossom just in case he tries to activate anything to stop it like an FC. And I'm just gonna pen three. I'm gonna pop the two cards so I can get the two searches. So happy we added in a new card for Foam Pal Celestial Magician so we get another, another search. And I'm just trying to get as many like cards as I can advantage just in case he can like destroy my field. I want to be able to come back. Uh, this is like a very simple Electromite combo. I'm, I'm gonna be honest. Pretty much 80 to 90 percent of the time we're searching out astrograph from my deck for electromite because astrograph is just so powerful i'm i just want it it's a free card that gets me a free ad and it just works so well with the deck so i'm gonna special summon astrograph i'm pretty sure astrograph is gonna get us a search also and then we're gonna get a free draw from electromite uh i think i'm trying to yeah i'm trying to get the trap and i set up the trap i set up the skills so i get attack i get the free ad from oak dragon and we're going to end off with Appaloosa. I couldn't make anything better. I really wanted to make an Omni Negate, but in this case it worked out pretty well. He is playing some variant of a rank 3 deck because he activates Speed Top and he activates his uh, Emergency Teleport. He's going to use this to negate my Ash Blossom, so his Emergency Teleport's going to go through. And I'm like, oh man, I'm a little scared, but I'm like, I still have Appaloosa, so I'm like, just in case. And I still have the Trap too. So I got, I got like, I got things I can do. The reason I'm using the trap on this guy, even though I can negate its effect, is this guy's effect, he sends a level 3 monster from his deck to the graveyard, and that can't be negated. Um, the only part of his effect that can be negated is when you gain attack. So pretty much, even if I try to negate this guy with my Appaloosa, he's still going to send a monster, he's still going to get a free card, he's still going to probably like combo off. So I'm like, uh, I, I know that check, so I'm like, okay, I gotta destroy it right now. Activate the trap, pop it. And I'm gonna get a, a free search from Star Pendulum Graph. And then here he's just going like all in full plays. I'm gonna start using Appaloosa because I gotta start negating stuff. And I think he's just trying to like, honestly, I don't know what he's trying to do. He, he's probably, I don't know what he's trying to do. I'm not gonna kid you. I have no idea what he's trying to do. But he's doing something, that's for sure. He's gonna attack over my Appaloosa. And I think he just ends his turn. He has a set trap. Uh, that one can negate. Okay, so, I think he might have gave up here or was trolling, I have no idea. This trap card can target a monster and negate its effects. So he had one negate on his field, only one disrupt. So I could do all my plays, but I had to be afraid of him negating one card. But for some reason, he uses it on his own monster, and then he just gives up, I'm pretty sure, because, like, I think he misplayed? I'm not entirely sure. All right, here we go. This replay is one of my favorites because look at my starting hand. My starting hand is not good. This is my starting hand. Dragon Pit, a scale, okay, pretty good. A trap, okay, pretty good. But then I got two more traps and I got a gamma. I can't pendulum, I can't do any plays. The only play I can do is do this. This is, this is the most optimal play you can possibly do with this hand. So I'm just praying like, oh, I, I hope he doesn't kill me in one turn, you know? And what deck am I playing against? One of the strongest spam decks in the entire game. I'm playing against Synchros. So I'm like, I'm like, I only have two disrupts. I can only use my trap once and I can only use Cypher and Gamma once. So I'm like, I have to make them count because if I mess up even once, he's going to absolutely kill me. He's going to summon like three boss monsters and I'm dead. I've seen it before, I've died to this deck from one card, Junk Synchron, so I have to make every card and every negate count. He's gonna activate this, and the reason I'm not negating anything right now is because I'm like, I'm like, what is this? Tuner? Okay, what is this? Tuner? Tuner? Oh, this is a link. You can't, can't synchro with this. So I'm thinking in my head like, 
he can't make any synchros. He's playing a synchro deck, but he can't make any, any synchros because he's only running tuners. And I'm thinking like, what does he have in his graveyard? Well, he has a Jet Synchron, he has a Duskbot, and he has Crystal. The famous combo is that you go into this like, this Mecha Phantom Beast bird card. Using these two cards, and then you like go complete full combo with them. So I see what's coming, and I'm like, okay, well I don't want him to go into that, so I'm going to pop that card. So I'm going to make it a little trickier for him, so he has to commit more cards. But he still goes into it, which is like, it's kind of bad for me. But luckily, I have Gamma, so I'm like, no, I can't let this go through. If this one card goes through, I lose the Gadul. He's going to summon so many monsters, so I have to stop it here. Gamma is going to activate, it's going to destroy it, negate its effect, and I'm pretty sure he just like ends his turn because he can't do anything. And uh, I can't really do anything either, but, but oh man, I got so, so, so lucky. I top decked a Wisdom Eye. And then the next turn, I top deck the Harmonizer. Scale 8, scale 5, Wisdom Eye can become any scale. So here, I'm just gonna, I'm just so happy right now. Oak Dragon's gonna add me back Wisdom Eye. Okay, I'm gonna normal pend one. I don't know why I did that, that was interesting. Electromite's gonna search me Astrograph, I'm gonna start popping things, adding Astrograph. Electromite's gonna draw me a card, Astrograph's gonna add me a card. Dude, I do this almost every single game because it's such an important combo. And I want to see what card I draw, I kind of forgot. Oh yeah, Star Pendulum, that's a decent card. So I'm going to attack him twice. I still have the trap card, so if he has anything, I can disrupt him. He's just going to destroy all my monsters, pop like a Joker. And I can just set up my scales, I can just Pendulum again. So, pretty sure I just kill him here. But my two negates came in so clutch against his deck. And my top decks came in even more clutch. Even with two absolutely dead cards, I just... The luck of the cards, man. I just drew the perfect cards. What can I say? And this will be the final replay of the final episode of the story series. So, in this one, this guy goes first. He activates this card that lets him draw two, and I top deck an Ash Blossom, and I'm so sad because I'm like, man, if only I had the Ash Blossom, I could have stopped this one card, but eh, it's whatever. It, it didn't happen, I didn't have the Ash Blossom. So now I have to play through all of his like spell and traps. He activates Imperial Order. Dude, this card is actually really good against our deck because it negates all the spells and everything. This one, even the pendulums. So like, I'm like thinking like, huh. How am I gonna get- I gotta get rid of that, but, like, how am I gonna get rid of it, you know? But luckily I have the trap. The trap is, like, pretty much always the solution to everything. He's playing Eldlick, and he's going into, like, a normal play where he, like, summons his boss monster and attacks. I'm gonna activate the trap, and I'm gonna target his back row, rather than target his monster, because I know I can get rid of the monster. Um, because this sends to the graveyard, and this guy can be sent. I'm like, I'm gonna pay a little bit of life points because I need to snipe the back row. I need to get rid of the back row because I don't know what it is. It could be something that can stop me. So he's gonna chain his trap, which is like, ah, that's fine. But I'm gonna get rid of the back row. I'm also gonna get rid of Imperial Order. So I'm feeling a little good. I'm pretty sure at the end phase, he's gonna get to set like some free cards, which is kind of broken, but my top deck's not bad. I top deck, uh... I mean, I just top deck a pendulum. Any pendulum I top deck would have been good, and I did. I have been top deck a pendulum. So I use Duelist Alliance, and I set up my scales. And I don't really have much to work with, I'm gonna be honest. So I have to pendulum what I got, and that's what I do. Uh, I pop a Torrental Tribute. For some re oh, that's right. For some reason, he doesn't use Torrental Tribute when I summon Purple Poison. Um, I don't know why, but I end up popping it anyways. So, now I'm feeling a little bit better. My board's honestly not that good, but it's not the worst, but it's not the best either. I use Ash Blossom, I negate that spell, because that spell's like the best trap in his entire deck. And I'm like, I'm chill, I'm, I'm pretty chill right now. Uh, I use the trap to pop his uh, Paleozoic, and then I use this Magician Guy to pop that. So I got two pops out of the way. And I also get a search from Star Pendulum Guy, so I'm feeling a little better, because I know that next turn, as long as he doesn't destroy my Sorcerer, I can set up my skills again. He's gonna summon an Elder from his deck, and he's gonna attack me, putting me at only 800 life points. Activate Monster Reborn. Uh, I feel like if he activated that earlier, he might have been able to kill me. Oh no, never mind. He had no monsters in his graveyard. 
And I think this was a duel where as soon as he summoned double Eldlick, they're both level 10, I was like, oh, I lose. Like, he's just gonna summon that, like, train guy and uh, kill me for, like, 2,000 effect damage. And he was thinking for a long time, too. He's probably figuring out why he couldn't. But the reason was because his card, this one, says you can't special summon monsters except uh, Eldlick monsters for the rest of this turn, or, like, zombies or something. Yeah, you can't special summon zombies monsters. So this is like pretty much the best card he can bring out. It's not bad, honestly. It gets him a free draw. And he's gonna set two, and I'm like, well, hopefully that two back row is not too big. If I don't do anything, I'm gonna die, so I have to do something. So I'm gonna try to salvage this. Wisdom Eye is gonna search me to skill eight so I can pendulum summon. And I'm gonna try to pop the back row as soon as I can because like I need to get rid of it. And the reason I'm using the trap right away rather than penduluming is because I have a Wisdom Eye in my hand and I can just replace that skill because Wisdom Eye can become any skill. I'm going to go into a cross sheep and then I'm going to proceed to pendulum summon three. Uh, one for my hand and two for my extra decks. So this is looking pretty good right here. Sorcerer is going to pop a card so I get to add a Joker which is nice so I have some recovery just in case something goes wrong because he does have one set trap uh, that can be anything. And then I'm going to go into Electromite right here. The reason I didn't go into Electromite earlier is because Electromite can only be made with Pendulum Monsters. And I had an Ash Blossom on my side of the field. So Ash Blossom is not a Pendulum, so I had to make a Cross Sheep in order to get the arrows pointing down so I could Pendulum Summon more. And then I can go into Electromite, because Electromite is just so important. I'm going to pop the other scale, add Astrograph, Astrograph's going to Special Summon himself, Electromite's going to, you know, draw me a card. Every single game I do this combo, it's so good. And I add a Harmonizing and I get a free draw. Maxi, it's pretty nice just in case something happens. I'm gonna make a Boral Sword. And I think this is where I realized like, wait, I think I can kill him. So I'm gonna attack with Astrograph first and then I'm gonna attack with Boral Sword. Boral Sword's gonna use his effect to switch it to defense and then I'm gonna attack again. And yeah, from 800 life points, I defeated the opponent in one turn against Eldlick, which is probably the scariest deck I feel I can play against. Because I've, I've read a bunch of comments of people saying, like, how do you beat Eldlick? Like, Eldlick's too strong. Like, yeah, they are strong. But you just got to know, like, what to do in certain situations. Pretty much what I always aim for is hitting the traps. Hitting the traps because once you hit their traps, yeah, they can come back from the graveyard. Like, it replaces. But they have some really good traps. Like, the Solemn, the Torientals. Uh, the guy had Lost Win. You, you have to, like, at least try to hit those. He, they even have Skill Drain and stuff like that. Thank you so much for watching this episode. Whether you watched from the beginning, whether you skipped through, whether you skipped to the ending, all I want to say is thank you so much for supporting me and watching this episode. It means so much to me. I had so much fun making this episode, even if it got really rough near the end with the win and losses. I still loved making this episode and I love that I'm able to share this with someone because I absolutely love this game and I would love to teach Yu-Gi-Oh! to you, the viewer, because I really do enjoy this game. And I really do hope you enjoy this game. Even if sometimes it may be stressful, it always has its ups and its downs. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this episode. I want to start a new series, but that'll be for another day. I hope you have a great day or night. I hope you get lucky. And as always, peace.